even in the presentation itself, it, there are two parts. Um, the first part will, will be delivered in um, Malaysia, whereas the second part will be delivered here. Um, so between Mr. M Mr. May and Mr. Tan, there will be, sorry, Mr. Tan and Mr. May. <laughs> yeah, I got confused as well. Um, we, we, we will have a presentation um, online first, and then half, uh, once that's been done, um, Mr. May will come up and then he'll give up get the other part of the presentation. So without further ado, I'm going to hand the mic over to Malaysia. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for inviting me to share with you about our story in this symposium. Um, first of all, maybe I should tell you where I'm from. I'm from a small town called Georgetown um, on a small island called Penang. Uh, it's a small state in a country called Malaysia. So we are about four hours away by flight. We have a direct flight from Hong Kong, so that's about four hours. Uh, our population is uh, about 800,000 people on the island. I represent the owners of Himbas Depot, a property we um, invested in about 13 years ago. And also I'm responsible for managing it. As you can see from the photos, uh, when we acquired it at that time, it, the property and the surrounding neighborhood was in less than an ideal state. So before I talk about Himbas Depot, I would like to go back a bit in on a timeline. Um, about George, a bit about Georgetown. So prior to 2008, um, Georgetown was actually very popular uh, with visitors uh, primarily for its beaches, uh, the delicious street food and a, a lay back town kind of vibe. Um, in 2008, we part of Georgetown was inscribed as a UNESCO heritage site, uh, marking a significant milestone in our town's uh, history. Uh, the pre this prestigious recognition highlighted the town's uh, historical and cultural significance. And between 2008 and 2012, we observe a gradual increase in tourists visiting the area. Uh, these visitors were there uh, because they were interested in exploring the rich heritage and unique architecture that Georgetown had preserved. And in the year 2012, uh, marked a significant turning point. We witnessed an explosion in the number of tourists uh, driven, driven by several converging factors. A mural created by a talented artist uh, struck a chord with the public, uh, beautifully integrating with the heritage buildings and um, capturing the essence of Georgetown. The mural along with others became iconic symbols of the town. And at the same time, the rise of social media platform, like uh, particularly Instagram, uh, shifted the trend towards visual, uh, photo visual sharing. The mural together with uh, Georgetown's his, uh, picturesque street and historical landmark became highly shareable content, uh, amplifying its appeal as a UNESCO heritage site. Street art began to rise in popularity um, becoming synonymous with Penang. Uh, and in 2014, uh, the transformation of Himbas Depot, originally built in 1947 in an Art Deco style, exemplified this cultural renaissance. Initially a bus hub serving the Penang community, the depot was repurposed into a vibrant art space. This transformation was driven by the growing need um, within the artist community for a venue where they could showcase their work without uh, the commercial pressure to sell, allowing for greater creative freedom and um, experimentation. With a modest uh, budget, we refurbished the uh, Hinvas Depot just enough to hold exhibitions keeping the cost low uh, while we figure out sustainable ways to uh, maintain it as an art space. Uh, the de depot size is about one and a half acres. Uh, so it's big enough to allow us to carve out smaller spaces to lease to small business owners. 
the, re the rental income collected from these leases gradually grew uh, over time, uh, and enabling us to sustain and develop the space further. Um, in 2022, uh, Himbas Depot become, became even more dynamic uh, with the addition of coax a community experiment initiative uh, backed by Mr. May, uh, who's going to talk to you later. Uh, he's a prominent uh, Penang architect. And at that time, he boldly moves his team of nearly 50 staff uh, from a very nice, comfortable, comprehensive office space to an old junkyard uh, shared within Bus Depot. By establishing his, uh, his architectural practice within Hinbus Depot, he brought along Coax. Uh, which has uh, since created, hosted, and collaborated uh, on over, over 300 community programs. The, this initiative has significantly expanded our reach and impact, um, engaging a wider audience than uh, and ever before. Um, Mr. May will elaborate on COEX in, the, in his section later. Um, so to, to conclude, uh, my part of presentation, uh, before I hand over to him, um, you know, to reflect on today's topic about cultural tourism, um, our short experience with a heritage site like Kinbas Depot uh, underscores the importance of, of uh, staying relevant to the needs of the Penang community uh, by aligning to the community interests. Uh, we were able to garner their support uh, and their, and very importantly, their involvement, which is crucial uh, to the success. Uh, we were able, uh, we are where we are today, uh, Himbas Depot, is actually thanks to the active involvement of the uh, participation of the arts community in particular. Um, as a result, it has become a vibrant uh, cultural destination uh, in Penang, uh, where visitors can actually experience um, engage with and uh, learn about Penang's rich uh, heritage. Um, so this is my uh, last slide, um, just to reflect on the points that I mentioned just now, um, before I hand over to Mr. May to continue and present on his part, part on uh, COAX. If there's any question, uh, you know, uh, you can reach me directly here. Uh, Please, please feel free to do so. Uh, let me hand over to Mr. May to, to elaborate more on his part on COAX. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tan. Uh, both of us are invited, and thanks for HK Icon of inviting us. So both of us are invited, and uh, Mr. Tan opt to stay in Penang to take care of in Bus Depot and I, I, I choose to take this opportunity or an excuse to come to Hong Kong because I miss Hong Kong. This is my fifth time to Hong Kong. I still have 95 times to come to make it 100. Uh, thanks of uh, Mr. Tan uh, uh, sharing about their, uh, how they manage their family property and how they make good use of their uh, so-called uh, heritage building and make it a community hub. Uh, before I start my part, I would like to share uh, how is both of our relationships goes. First of all, I think uh, Hitbus Depot has been grow. Uh, I was in, in, in this case, I will name it horizontally or axis X, where it, they, they were actually rooted to the communities and make something very relevant and uh, a, a good platform for all of us. Then uh, our part, uh, Coax, uh, actually do the other way around. We go on the X. Uh, y axis, where we try to reach further and ground deeper to make the horizontals uh, be more structured with the vertical axis to form a tree or to form a very organic growth. But this is not, not enough because we still need to multiply this to make it an ecosystem. So, who will make this complete? In this case, is community, is a people. With, with this uh, uh, so called ecosystem, our community is actually uh, help us to propagate, to multiply this, and make it a full cycle of ecosystem and make it sustainable. I have to say, yeah, survival. 
I have to say this because in Penang, we are in a very different context with uh, Hong Kong, where Hong Kong actually uh, enjoy a large population. Uh, skill is not an issue. But in Penang, we have a very embarrassingly small population. A lot of things won't be able to survive with economic of skill. So I think uh, Hinbas Depot and Coex existence is actually bring all the individual together uh, to form a collective effort so that the uh, ecosystem can go uh, very organically. A forest needs a size, a minimum size. So what we want to do is not to plant a bonsai to control the growth, but let it grow organically. So this is the story behind. Uh, before I go further, I, I would like to track back a bit of our history. I'm an architect and we, uh, uh, I formed uh, my, my, my architecture practice 21 years ago with my childhood friend. And after 20 years of growth, after going through SARS uh, pandemic, uh, we survived. And then at the same time, we have another issue. After all these uh, interesting architectural projects that we have been done, what is our future of our architecture? So we decided to migrate our architectural philosophy from just designing a building to curating experience. Because to us, we find that ex uh, human or end user experience are much more important than an impressive building. But uh, where is the knowledge come from? Because our architectural training doesn't give us enough uh, uh, knowledge of curating a good experience. So we decided to soak ourselves into the community and uh, COEX is one of our attempts. Uh, we come up with a new idea of community experiment. If we don't have knowledge, why not we experiment it? So we would like to uh, sort of set up a platform where we can experiment our idea of, uh, exp uh, of uh, architectural experience. Then why COEX? COEX means, uh, co and X actually means a lot of different words in English. So our idea to name this coex is that we leave a room for everyone to compose their own coex. Uh, to us, is community experience. You can call it coffee experiment or common common ex girlfriend. So this is a blank canvas for that means this is a blank canvas for everyone. You can actually uh, based on uh, 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 your your personal preference to build your dream place. In a way, this is a very inclusive. Uh, way to, uh, to curate a platform. So we have been moving from a very uh, comfortable, I would say, a very comfortable and corporate uh, working environment to a young yet, as what Mr. Tan mentioned just now. Uh, uh, before we go further, you can see at the uh, lower end corner, this is where we are, and this is a city center with our tallest building, we call it Komta. And you can see this is a heritage core zone and buffer zone here. The interesting part is that we are not in the buff, uh, bu uh, either core zone or buffer zone. We are in, actually in the site of the uh, heritage area. Uh, this gives us an opportunity in, in fact, because if we are in the core zone, we are actually restricted by a lot of constraints. And this is sort of like a no man's land and nobody care is young yet uh, since 40 years ago. So whatever we do is actually uh, some add-on to, to these situations. So we love that. So this is how uh, it is. Uh, Hinbas Depot had been curating this place for the last 10 years, and we just moved in at this last, we call it last puzzle of Hinbas Depot. It's just 14,000 square feet uh, for the last two years. And this is how it looks like. Uh, it was a scrap metal yard. Uh, owned by an Indian family uh, for the last three generations. Uh, in the process, we also, because on, on our other project, we salvage all of this uh, recycled material and uh, we start to think about how to make full use of it. And normally, in our practice, we specify material and the contractors will go and find it. But in this case, we do it the other way around. We find a material and we find the uh, passionate workers, then only we figure out what are we going to make full use in consideration with the characters of the material we found uh, and also the availability to the skill of the skill of the worker because 
we are actually carrying out all the constructions during the pandemic. So this is some of the process of uh, uh, dealing with the timbers, uh, with a lot of people's help, and over a, uh, about a year of construction, because we only have three workers to work uh, for us during the pandemic. Uh, this is where we are. We moved in uh, two years ago, 9th of September 2022. And this is our team happily uh, moving in. And this is, this, this is actually a historical photo taken 9th of September uh, when, uh, sec, uh, 2022, when everyone uh, just come out from the pandemic. And every, every one of them are actually looking forward to this platform. Uh, so this is the next chapter. This, this, this painting painted by me is about 100 days after we moved in uh, the, the place. And there's a lot of happening. Within the first 100 days, we have been organizing about 200 events. So the, the impact is actually overwhelming. And after that, we start to think about how are we going to organize all this energy. So we have been, uh, we conclude it in three uh, ways. We have three major user or stakeholder uh, in this place. First of all, of course, is our architect practice where we fund the, pl uh, the place and we start, we initiate, we curate it. Second one we, is we call it co -exer which is our close community friend, and they are our powerhouse of our event. And the, the most importantly is the third one, which is our general community. First one, uh, as an architect, we curate, we fund, we organize, and at the same time, we enjoying uh, the, the, the input from this place. Some of it, like for example, we just celebrate our 20th anniversary. We, have, we make this place as our canteen. Uh, during the weekend, our colleagues also use this place to be their weekend market, just in front of their office. Uh, sometimes we host some prominent architects, in this case, Kengo Kuma families was uh, in our place. And many of our architects' friends visiting. And we actually take this opportunity to engage with more architects. Of course, there are many uh, university students visit, include some of the Hong Kong University colleges' uh, students visit. And also, uh, first time, we have received some walk-in customer for an architectural service. This is the energy that we enjoy at our place. Second uh, user, uh, we call it co -exer. Co-exer are the established or prominent artists and community player. Uh, they actually use our place as uh, their platform, and they are also our mentor. They are also our ambassador. Uh, they are also actually a content creator to us. So both of us are actually uh, helping each other to make this better. So who are they? So we are using it as a forum visit from the placemaker from Taiwan. Uh, 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 time uh, 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 so called a placemakers forum and we also do crossover on different artists in this case is actually a immersive sensor uh, different sensory of art we make it in one event and sometimes we just make use of every single corners of our place uh, and a weekend concert or even a private dinner a tea ceremony uh, actually, this is our meeting room. Uh, so this is how we save our cost and we make full use of our place when we are not using it during the weekend or at night. They will be fully utilized by others. Uh, of course, lion dance. Uh, frame screening. Uh, we uh, Actually, she is honky. Uh, Jill Lee, Lisa C. She was in our place uh, about a year ago for her movie, uh, her documentary screening. And then sometimes our meeting room also convert into a book exhibition space, books exhibitions. And then also a place for a movie shooting, a book launching, movie launching, visit from uh, Taiwan, a place, uh, then also a corporate uh, event. Uh, in, Asia Interior Design Gathering, 
the last one, the last component of COEX is actually the community. Uh, community is very important to us, but we have to handle it very carefully because we are running within a very limited resources. So we can't help everyone. So how are we going to, uh, to manage this? Uh, in fact, uh, what we have is that if every, if, if for those who come in a, in a very empty glasses, we actually encourage them to join our event so that they can get almost full. When I'm, they are nearly spilled over, what we do is that we just add a little bit of last drop, maybe three drops of water, they are able to actually spill over and contribute to others. So this is sort of a, a way where we can only use our resources in the most important thing. Uh, just for information, we have no funding from government. We have to all uh, running cost is actually from our own pocket. As well as uh, we, have, we do not have staff, we have only one and a half staff. We have one full-time staff handling this and another half is I myself. So these are very limited resources that uh, we have to use very tactfully, but you want to maximize the impact. So on these communities, uh, we actually have quite a lot of uh, fun events. This is a group of Thai uh, children. They come from uh, Isan all the way to Penang by train, two days. And they only come with their, their trip, but with, with no money for return ticket, so they have to do performance to make their money or their trip back. And we have a group of Malay, uh, Malay is uh, actually a, a rocker where uh, uh, they are hardly get a place to do their performance and our place are forgiving enough for them to play. At that night there are 300 people in our place and sometimes we do it uh, quite a lot of uh, different experimental events because our place we don't have any uh, so-called pressure of banter so we have to we can be a bit more experimenting and even uh, traditional music and uh, we sometimes our religion uh, our religion do it just for fun with no audience and sometimes we have a crossover music event with uh, Malaysia and Taiwan uh, exhibitions and also we try some crossover of uh, Chinese instruments and Western. This is during a Mooncake Festival. Uh, we try to uh, we try and see how when uh, Fu Zhen mix with a uh, keyboard. And we help a Taiwan Tainan uh, startup to do an exhibition in Penang. Uh, last few slides. We also uh, help a, a group of uh, aborigines from Perak, which is about two, uh, two hour drive from Penang. They go all the way north uh, to our place to perform their almost uh, lost culture. It's a shadow show where we can never see it even in Malaysia. It's almost extinct. And they are done. We enjoyed that night. Last few slides. We also have uh, some movie screening of old movie. This is some of the Hong Kong produced uh, movie in 1960. <laughs> and we have a singing session after that. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.